Hi everybody, uh, it's Pete, uh, Pete from the Champagne Collection here uh, again and uh, once again I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Chris Walkie from Glass of Bubbly and also to, to uh, be joined by Oog Lorenz who is uh, the, the student from uh, the Viticulture School in Avis uh, currently studying uh, and as part of that here in the UK on his internship working alongside uh, myself at the Champagne Collection uh, to understand a bit more of Champagne in, in the UK market. And the, the topic that we have been sort of mulling around for a while and, and wanted to sort of have a, a round table discussion and particularly getting Chris's thoughts on this is um, yeah, what are the challenges or how do we go about establishing uh, a new name, a, protect, a grower or an artisan champagne, whatever you want to call it, here in the UK and getting some sort of foothold, whatever that might look like in, in, in the UK market. And, and I myself as an importer of, of, of artisan champagne uh, know, know some of the challenges uh, of that. Um, but I think from your perspective, who you, you wanted to sort of understand yeah. where, where we in the UK go about that yeah. and, and what the challenges that, that, that the we challenges face. And the what well, strategy you have to apply to develop this type of uh, um, champagne? Sure, it's sure. It's a million dollar kind of question <laughs> with a million dollar reward if you get it right, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it cer certainly is. I, I, I'm sorry to say I'm not sitting on a million dollars, which m might suggest that I haven't really been very successful. But I like to think that what I have done in, with some of the, the, the people that I've, I've represented and brought champagne into the UK, I've had some success. Mm. Um, that's probably most recently measured by getting Champagne Songuer yeah. and their two leading cuvées, the uh, Perez d'Origine Milzim and uh, their limited edition Poem, onto the shelf in Partridges, mm. albeit in small quantity, and uh, the orders have been small, but at least we've achieved that. So they recognise, I think, what is the most important initial thing to identify, mm. uh, and that is a quality product. Well, it, it is that, and obviously if, if we're talking about formulating a new name for this conversation, then yeah, part of that is finding yourself a good quality uh, champagne house supplier uh, over in the region. So you need to do a bit of research yourself. You need to know what tastes good. Um, so you need to find yourself a house that will supply the champagne for you then to put your brand on. Um, so there's many you choose from, we've all got different experiences on that. Uh, and can, that quality can, will be important. And can I just draw you a slight distinction there in terms of what, what the options are? Um, I, I've, I've always imported a, a brand, a, a, yeah, a, a house, brand. a producer yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and advertise and sold that. I've not gone down the road of, of, of having product produced yeah. with my own label on it which is yeah. another another there's way of looking at it I've, I've dealt with lots that are uh, still around some of them successful you could call it a tiny bit successful i've seen a lot come and go with lovely brand identities written nice ideas you know um so it, we're not going to be the first people to have done that that's that's for sure if we was going to do this kind of idea um but there is the opportunity, always an opportunity to create a new brand, a new label, let's call it that way, for the UK market because the love of champagne is, is, is quite strong in the UK and consumers do sometimes like to see something new or intrigued to try something new. So um, it's a certainly a, a possibility, yes. Mm. Yeah, when you say you've seen some and go, mm. come and go, um, have you seen any that have been successful? Uh, well, I seen. Uh, I know some that we, we, we still deal with. They they will probably enter our wards as such, or they're at a trade show. And depends what you you class as success. Success is very different to different people. Now that success could be it's allowed them to go part time to full time, and they're just permanently selling champagne. Or you know, success could be that you 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 turn it into a million pound plus turnover. Uh, if you look at something in recent years, PF is a good example. Yeah, done very well. New come out of the, uh, you know, come out, new kid out of the block, let's put it that way. A mm. uh, new brand identity. Uh, they they, they uh, saw a gap. They pursued that gap successfully and then ultimately they sold the brand on 
it still exists today. Uh, we mentioned it being in duty free. I saw the other day. Um, so that that's like a, if somebody had to look at how to do that, maybe they would try it and, and peek into their books and their diaries and see how they did it. But you can do that. I, I mean, me, I would suggest you pick a niche market. You target that niche market. You may want to go into the sports sector. You may want to go into luxury items or uh, as we spoke of earlier, you may want to go into, say, kitchen, uh, sorry, restaurants, should I say, of Asian cuisine. So if you pick a niche area, you're more likely to be successful because ultimately, if you if we sat here trying to create a new brand for the UK, we're, we're going to have to spend a lot of money or well, we have to be extremely good salespeople. And I think, you know, you, you asked the question, Oog, yeah. you know, what's the strategy? Yeah. Uh, I think that that's ultimately a question that I have found myself asking champagne houses who have, or producers, who've come to me and said, Pete, we'd like the champagne collection to represent us in the UK. And I've said to them, okay, well, tell me about your, your, your wines, yeah. your champagnes. And they say, well, we've got seven. So... Mm -hmm. well, Okay. So are you thinking that you want to import all seven into the UK? Uh, yeah. Well, what markets are you thinking of getting into? Oh, I'm not really sure. I think it, this is a different so, uh, thing together, Pete. I, I think that, that for a lot of the, the, the producers out there, they, they don't necessarily sit down with a view of understanding the UK market, where they might have a product that fits, where there's a gap, and so on. They it's, just assume you can't combine that. You, can't, they you wanna... cannot combine that because what you're talking about there is a, a passionate family producer. Him or her produces wines that they're very proud of, and they would have maybe a selection of six, seven different cuvées. That's lovely if you just want to promote that little uh, uh, yes. of champagne yeah, in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. What that's never going to be is a massive UK international brand. Because for that, you'd have to, you really, you want to say, right, this is our uh, NV, this is our NV Rosé, yeah. this is our Blonde de Blanc, or this is our Midicet. Brilliant, all consistent branding. Because a lot of these from all the grow champagnes, you, know, you tell me if I'm wrong, each of their labels would be very different brand identity on each one. Usually the case. Some are, some aren't. Some, some have got their branding very, very good. I think the main reason they're never going to be a big brand in the UK is they simply don't produce the volume, hmm. you know, and they don't want to be on supermarket shelves or anything like that. Be, because to produce the volume. We spoke about yeah. the so Yes. Yeah. It's niche, it's quality. There's a position in the market for it. So you can create a, a champagne brand, but there are certain little things, in my opinion, that you need to follow in order to do so. And one... So maybe the strategy to, to develop a brand in the UK is maybe the special cuvee, limited cuvee, to attack some niche markets, like you said. I would say so. Yeah, that's a very good way of doing it. And there are many. We, we, we go to Champagne Tastings, Pete, and there's always a new label or two. That may be a blingy gold bottle in fantastic packaging or yeah. some <laughs> very bizarre, be bizarre name. Not saying the quality inside is not, is not brilliant. Uh, but there's always new yeah. kids on the block, again, I use that term. Um, so it's not easy to get into. Although the market's quite big and there's 100 million bottles or so, whatever it is in the UK that is sold, um, there's a massive amount of competition. You have to be very clever. You have to pick a niche. You have to use the likes of social media, which I know we'll come to. And you have to uh, have persistence, determination to make it work. You need to be quite of an entrepreneurial spirit in order to make it work, in my opinion. Certainly one of, it's an interesting point that uh, you talk about there with, with, with the, uh, the sort of limited edition or, or um, high-end sort of speciality yeah, cuvier. Yeah. Because what, what I've found in, in my experience is if you, pick a, if you pick a producer who's got those seven, um, you know, cuvées, then if, if you take the entry-level cuvée, which is normally the, a brute, it's yeah. typically a blend, usually a, a very inoffensive, very pleasant, easy to drink champagne at a lower price. Um, it, it, it's actually hard, hard to sell that in the UK because people will typically go and buy their entry level brand that they, they sort of know and love. Yeah. And that will be a, a, a grand mark. For, for people like myself as an independent, you're actually reaching out to people who typically have got a reasonable amount of knowledge often about wine and champagne 
and you want to offer something different. And that's where I find the limited editions or the special cuvées. And I'm not just talking about vintages. I'm talking about, you know, there might, it might be a blend, but it might be aged for a number of years. In, sure. in, or in, they're technical. You know. so yeah, so, yeah, but, but the, the, they tend to be slightly higher in price. From a commercial point of view, the margins on those tend to be better. Uh, also, from a commercial point of view, you don't have to hold such a volume of stock because you know it's going to be slightly but slower moving. But well, the thing is, with your market, you sell the champagne. People know you, they trust you, they respect your opinion on that champagne. You are the brand. Yes. So that is the thing. What you need to overcome is when, if we're going to create a brand is, although that's very good to start off you driving or a personality driving that, it has to revert over to the brand that does that driving. Unless you was clever enough to say, look, I've got an A-list celebrity that's part of the family connected. Yeah. They're willing to put their name to this, this champagne. Then that's a different thing. You're, mm. You've got a massive identity. But all, all I'm saying is that you, you need to, that's good to have a person that pushes that champagne. Yeah. But you need to come away from that. We did it with Glass and Bubble. At the end of the day, I was going around to all of the tasting events with a magazine in my hand, telling people, telling people, telling people. People knew me as Mr. Bubbly. Then I worked tremendously hard to pull myself away from that brand and push the brand forward. So I don't care if people know who I am. It's do they know the brand? They know the brand. So if you're doing the champagne, you start off by you pushing the, the, that champagne ABC mm. to eventually that ABC brand becoming more important than whatever you could potentially do for it. So, you know, it's, but again, it, it can be done. I, I would personally would attack a niche market, very good champagne house with the production levels if we need to expand um, and use social media very, with being very savvy with social media, tie into one or two celebrities or key influencers, use social media. There are influencers that don't need to be in the wine industry to get you a big audience and you know, with, you'd need a little bit of budget behind you. So be it yourselves or you have an investor that likes the concept. Yeah. And then you push that market. So you may say, look, there's an opportunity to sell, I don't know, 400,000 bottles a year if we reach that, which is enough, you know, to, to have a major, you know, a, that's, that's, a major... That, that, that's a very good volume. Very if you, very if you can establish that volume in the UK in a, in a few years, that's, done, that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah that's, done, that, 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 that's that's going some, and yeah. uh, you know, you, you, I think you need to have a a pretty good marketing machine to 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 achieve that. But it's it's not inachievable as as uh, uh, unachievable as we've as we've seen with you know PF, yeah, which is which has been yeah. very successful, down to some very cute, clever marketing and you have good be. packaging, you good have branding, and and a you networking. Know, it's the whole the whole lot goes in networking, being clever, being vigilant. You know, just doing what 80% of others don't fail to do. You know, you, you can be better than 80% immediately by looking at what they do and stepping up to the mark on a lot of those things. You know, um, a lot of champagne houses, you know, you are not always visible on social media. Their websites aren't always uh, in English or there's certain things that don't work or the prices aren't put on the website. Um, there's inconsistency in branding. Uh, the name doesn't translate anything to the UK market. All of these little things that, you know, if yeah. you tick the boxes, you'll be well on your way to, to so, making a brand work. So it's important that looking at a brand, mm. you know, if you're, if you're thinking, even if somebody like myself, for example, who took, you know, took five houses and, yeah. or six houses and had a portfolio of limited editions or special cuvées that were hand-picked because that they are of excellent quality, behind all of that, the house still has to have certain things ticked mm. uh, and in place, even if you're only selling one of those cuvées, because undoubtedly people are going to look at that. They're going to look at the label. Mm. They're probably going to go and do some due diligence, and they're going to look at the, the, that that particular yes. you know website. So it it needs to be it needs to be good. And mm. certainly one of the problems I found is uh, a lot of the smaller producers mm, don't have that. Maybe I think in first to implement a new brand in the UK is to pass by, uh, maybe by uh, the special cuvee because the people who have a little bit of knowledge about champagne, they will say that they will say, Oh, I want to try. That's very different from what I know. And maybe when they say, Oh, that's very good champagne. I think the other cuvee of this brand is very good. So maybe 
after that they will want the classic, you know, cuvée, the non-vintage and everything, the classic rosé, the blanc de blanc. The, They're more the, likely to try. Yeah, to try the classic cuvée. But I, I, I mean, if I, they I, liked the, yeah. but the I think special what, what you've got to do with those those picking those special cuvées limited editions, you've got to find things that are different that that offer people something. Yeah. People, as you say, as I think you mentioned earlier on, Chris. People like to try different things, mm. and you know your your you've wine got, connoisseurs. You've still got a big uh, what's the word competition to overcome there, because there are very good wine distributors, uh, champagne distributors in the UK uh, that work hard to have a portfolio of wines on their books to cater for their their, their, their customers. And they do have a wide array of styles and flavours. They do, you know? yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. so do you want to suddenly go into battle with those? That's, with champagne collectors, we're not mentioned that, but champagne collectors, I said, right, I've got a name here, I've got an idea, I've got a vision. I, over 10 years, I spotted a niche. So mine was simply non disgorged bottles in original champagne cellars. I said, no competition, it's a good idea. I spoke to one or two people. It's not going to be millions of bottles sold a year. It's going to be not many at all, but very niche. And I can grab myself a, a foothold in that sector, selling champagnes. And I can expand on it. Maybe if we build a reputation, we build a client database, but you need to pick a niche. There's and, so and many it's, people it's what you say. champagnes. It's what you said at the start, isn't it? It's defining what success is. It's what defining it you, what, yeah. what it is to you. And that's one of the conversations that I've had with a couple of houses now, which is to say, okay, look, you want to, you want me to represent you in the UK. You know, we need to be sure that we both understand what success means. So we set the expectation yeah. Yeah. early on because yeah. success in the first year might be selling a hundred bottles, no more than that, Absolutely. you know, or even yeah. less, you know, yeah. uh, because it's a long, long, slow burn. So to, to, to ensure that, you know, I mean, I, I did have one producer, uh, lovely product, great backstory, all the ticks in the boxes that you would need. His expectation was that, you know, after coming back from seeing him with a, with a couple of cases of, of, of champagne that, you know, we'd shared the cost on, I would do some promotional work and then be ordering pallets of each. But that's the expectation of many of these. And, uh, and, and, I, and I, I, I tried to say, look, I'm sorry, but it doesn't work like that. You know. Well, you yeah. need to. You need to. If you and I went over to say, if we were all three of us, most certainly, if we went over to Champagne Region looking for a producer to supply us for our own label, we'd find one. We'd tell them the story. Yes. There was no. There, we, we, there would know what expectations they should have for the first year, second year, third year. Ultimately, you all want to be successful. You know, so we would set things out with them. We would find us. We would find supply quite easily. Yeah, absolutely. So many wines want to get into the UK. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's 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 an interesting topic, and I think a lot of people have probably thought, oh yeah, that, that uh, it, it's quite an attractive thing to do, isn't it? To either bring my own champagnes in or have my own champagne produced with my own label on it and, and established yeah. here this here in the, nice. here in the UK. Um, you know, and who knows, one day we, we, we might find ourselves tr trying trying a little bit harder well, to achieve. I it. think if you can get a group of people around the table with very good skill sets in different parts of the industry, mm. you stand a better chance. To try and be a one person uh, kind of show to That's do this is a very, tough very, very you, hard. You should rely upon expertise from different fields to different people, yeah. and you stand a very good chance of making something work. Yeah. yeah. And maybe also if the one girls from Champagne create some association to help them to succeed to import in the UK. Because in fact, when mm. we are alone, it's more difficult when we are many mm. to work on that. I would agree. As a new so there are associations which are good there, but a new associations with focus purely on getting to the UK market. Very good point. I like yeah. it. Mm. Good. Well, so yeah, I think we have a good interview, a good podcast. Yeah, good yeah. Podcast I, today. I, I, I think it's uh, it, you know, as I say, it's an interesting, it's an interesting subject, yeah. and it gives me food for thought in terms of developing our portfolio of champagnes, and and I've always been a lover of of champagnes, limited edition, especially cuvées. They're different. They offer something, you know, away from the norm. Uh, I've been to plenty of tastings and 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 and. And, and tasted some fairly bland stuff 
you know, when it's just the entry level and you think, well, it's going to be really hard to sell that. You know, I appreciate there's a quality there, but it's going to be very hard to, to match that up against what people's traditional favourites. Yeah. So like, like the to, big brand, Grand Marc. Like, like. like the Grand Marc's yeah. and the big brand and people want to be seen with those. So you've got to have something quite special. So uh, I think it's it's good food for thought. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris, for for your contribution and, and hosting that. That's very kind of you. Uh, no and Glass of Bubbly, we appreciate that. Noog, thank you for your questions. You're welcome. Uh, let's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll uh, I'm sure, talk again. Yeah, uh, about obviously, some, yeah. <laughs> some, some more subjects as you go through your internship. But uh, yeah. thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Pete.